KSAT 12. The news at noon starts right now. We start with late breaking news this noon. San Antonio firefighters saying that they tried their best, but there was no saving a man who was found in his burning home. He died just before they could get to him. Katrina Weber is live where it all happened. The 4000 block of Commercial Avenue near Gillette Boulevard. Do they know Katrina why he wasn't able to get out on his own? Well, there's really just speculation at this point, but neighbors did tell firefighters that that man used a wheelchair to get around. Now, whether that delayed his escape or perhaps if he died in another way is still part of this very active investigation that's going on here right now. The firefighters say the first thing they found here were heavy flames coming out of the metal building. Although it might appear to be a building that would house a business, they say this had been converted into a home at some point. Several people, including a couple who live in a trailer on the property, noticed the smoke and flames and called 911 around 9.30 this morning. They told firefighters there was a strong chance the man was still inside the home. After they put out the fire and searched, crews did find him dead. It appears the fire uh, originated in the, kind of in the middle of the structure towards the front. Uh, the victim was located near that same area. Um, don't know if, uh, if, the, uh, if the victim was always in a wheelchair, just needed it for to ease of access. Arson investigators have been searching the property, trying to find out how this fire started. Now, we also noticed that police homicide investigators are here. I asked the fire department about that, and they said that that is now part of the standard procedure whenever, and whenever they have someone who died uh, inside a fire or at the scene of a fire, they do call homicide investigators. Now, we have no official name of the man who was killed, but we are told that he was in his 60s, and I did speak with the a couple who seemed to know him pretty well, but they told us they were just too upset to talk. Reporting live on the South Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Here's some pictures you figured you would see. Right now, people already staking their claim trying to save their Easter camping spots. The city will lift the curfew at several local parks at 11 o'clock tonight. This is Breckenridge Park, just one of the many on the list. And here's a list of the other affected parks overnight. Camping is going to be allowed at these places. Park curfews will resume at 11 p.m. on Easter Sunday, March 31st. And the city reminds people to clean up after themselves. I'm going to add the word please when camping this Easter weekend. We've got more information for you on KSAT.com. We're staking out the parks. Looking like a good weekend to do this, Justin. Yeah, it's shaping up to be a pretty nice Easter weekend. The only thing I'll tell you, it'll be a little bit warm. It'll be a little bit humid, but if you're camping out, you should have no issues. We're not expecting any rain or anything like that. Let's look at the forecast. 82 on Saturday, 84 on Easter Sunday. It will be fairly humid on Easter Sunday. You'll see quite a bit more cloud cover, and the morning lows will be in the 60s versus the 40s that we saw this morning. Right now, we're starting to warm up, though. It's been a rapid warm-up. 70 degrees at the airport, 69 in New Braunfels, 70 at Seguin. Upper 60s for Bernie and Kerrville. We're looking at a south or southwesterly wind, which is really helping to warm us up today, especially considering we're seeing clear skies. So, yes, we started off at 45 this morning. It was chilly. Uh, as I showed you, we're already up to 70. We're forecasting to be close to 79 this afternoon for a 34 degree swing in temperatures. We do have some rain in the forecast that holds off until next week. We'll take a look at that, plus the drought monitor, too. Where do we stand? That's coming up in just a couple minutes. Thank you, Justin. A driver arrested after San Antonio police say that he crashed into two vehicles parked along I-35 on the northeast side, and that sent a man to the hospital. It happened around 1030 last night, your Loop 410 in Ritterman Road. Police tell us a man parked on the shoulder because his SUV had broken down. His brother parked his SUV behind him to offer to help. Well, that's when a third driver in a truck hit both parked vehicles. One of those SUVs hitting one of the men on the side of the road. He was taken to the hospital in serious condition. Police arresting the man in the truck and charging him with intoxication assault. San Antonio fire crews working to figure out what caused a fire on the city's south side last night. Smoke spotted just before 11 on South Hackberry Street near I-10. Crews at the scene say the two-story building was empty, had previous damage to the walls and floors, though. No injuries reported, and the building is expected to be demolished pretty soon. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says it has now arrested a suspect accusing that man of posing as a 14-year-old girl 
who was trying to lure another 14-year-old girl into having sexual conversations. And the sheriff says there could be more victims. Sheriff Javier Salazar says one of the victim's family members told deputies about some of these messages that they found allegedly between the teen and a 19-year-old by the name of Sal Falcón Ibarra. In addition to being charged with online solicitation of a minor, Falcón Ibarra is also charged with possession of child pornography. The sheriff thinks that there are more victims out there. If you think you know something about this case, call the Bear County Sheriff's Office. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of a few. That's the idea behind the city proposed aim at flood control. It could demolish over 100 homes with the goal of saving thousands more in a 100-year floodplain. The city of San Antonio spoke to a full house crowd last night at Brentwood Middle School proposing the 52-acre drainage project near Concepcion Creek that's along Highway 90 and west of I-35. Public work says roughly 4,000 homes in that area sit in that floodplain. The city's assistant director of public works says the city is proposing three options, each with a different cost and impact for certain communities. But all three scenarios call for the demolition of over 100 homes. The rain event that we're trying to prevent is a 100-year storm event, and this area has never seen a 100-year rain event. And that is what we're trying to focus on. So it's, I know it's, it's a tough sell to tell people that uh, something really bad could happen when something small has never really happened before. The options are just proposals. Public Works wants to start the conversation now and make sure people are aware they live in a floodplain. The city plans to meet with residents again April 9th, but they are still working on a location. The San Antonio Public Library scaling back its renovation plans at one west side location, and its board says budget constraints are the reason why. Problem is, this project's already taken seven years. These renovations backed by two bond projects. The board's vote to change design plans includes removing a bathroom, windows, and solar shade systems to protect from the heat and glare. It's also going to change materials for the plan plaza, as well as remove the meeting room support and storage space. Some neighbors say they're frustrated, but the library says they will continue to listen to what the community is saying. I think that the, the uh, changes are still vague, but worse, the, the architect didn't have answers for a lot of the questions that people have. When we came down to looking at the, the scope and some design enhancements, we realized that it was not possible with the funding available. The board says about 90% of the 2017 bond project is complete, but the 2022 bond project that will change due to rising material costs. San Antonio Animal Care Services need your help. More than 30 dogs need a home or foster home. The dogs have been living in confinement at a boarding facility for months now. If you are looking to adopt or be a temporary foster home for one of the dogs, now is the time. ACS will provide you with everything you need, including pet food. All you have to do is head over to KSAT.com for a link to register. The solar eclipse coming up. A NASA astronaut is going to share what impact she hopes this event has on you. Now it is on in less than two weeks. People from around the world, including astronauts, will be coming to Texas to get a view of the total solar eclipse. Tiffany Huerta spoke to a veteran astronaut, Dr. Ellen Ochoa, about what we can learn from this amazing natural phenomenon. What is your favorite part of being in NASA? Obviously, the experience of being in space is, is just something that you can't replicate. But what I, I think what I really took away from it is the power of the team. Dr. Ellen Ochoa is the first Latina astronaut to go to space. Do you ever have dreams of space? Before I went to space, I absolutely, and after, I absolutely had dreams about being in zero gravity. She spent nearly 1,000 hours in space from 1993 to 2000. And in 2013, Ochoa became the 11th director of NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston. Our KSAT meteorologists, who are fascinated with space and science, also had some questions for Ochoa. Meteorologist Mia Montgomery wanted to learn more about her experience. What is your favorite thing about what you do? I think it's um, about the goals of what NASA has. It's about um, making new discoveries. It's about solving challenges. 
It's trying to understand more about what humans can learn about the space environment and and really then how to bring benefits back to Earth from that as well. So I, you know, I was just happy to be part of a team that was uh, working on that mission. Ochoa remains passionate about space and science. Next month, she will be traveling to Austin to catch the total solar eclipse. What can we learn from this total solar eclipse coming to Texas? First of all, I, I hope it gets people interested in what astronomy can teach us about how all the objects, uh, and particularly the ones that we see every day, right, the sun and the moon, um, as well as the Earth, how they sort of interact, um, learn a little bit more about orbital dynamics. Ochoa says it's also a great opportunity for kids to learn more about science. For scientists, it, it is also another great opportunity, particularly to study the corona of the sun. Uh, because with the rest of the sun blocked out, um, there are ways that you can now collect data that you couldn't um, you can only do, you know, during a solar eclipse. Our KSAT weather team has been covering stories related to the total solar eclipse. Meteorologist Justin Horn is excited for this once in a lifetime event. Have you ever talked to anyone who's been in space when the eclipse is happening, like look down on Earth to see what it looks like? Yeah, there's there's some photos and some video. Um, you can look at it from the 2017 eclipse. I think you could just uh, look up online um, and they'll, sh they'll the, uh, it's essentially showing the shadow on Earth from the eclipse. So yeah, we had we had people in space in 2017. We've got them in space now. So they, they have a unique vantage point to, to look at that shadow. Remember, KSAT 12 is your eclipse authority. We will have extensive coverage on April 8th and leading up to the big day. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Outside with Lockham. First off, talking to an astronaut is this absolutely incredible thing to get to do. And then talking about the eclipse. Woo. Well, Justin says that's why he was late for the show one day because <laughs> he true. had to talk to this man. Woman. I was in there talking to Dr. Ochoa and then I lost track of time because I, you know, I was interested. In what it's all right. Say. That's pretty interesting. Uh, but I'm here today uh, here on time and the aquifer is down three tenths of a foot to 640 even in your pollen count. Oak. It's a big problem. I know it's getting me today. 7,220 molds, grass, mulberry, hackberry are all low. What does the forecast look like for Easter and what about next week? We're going to take another look at that seven day for you coming up. I think it's Easter related, the question again? 100%. You think so? All right, mm -hmm. let's find out. You Mike what? Himself. What kind of question? Hey, I'm by myself today. So. Oh, okay. Where are your friends? That's my question. <laughs> Celebrating Easter. Oh, and that's yeah. what, of course, folks are going to start doing. I know a lot of the, the curfews are uh, lifted at many of the parks around town. And we want to know, share your Easter photos and from some of the traditions. I know you haven't gotten started maybe as of yet, but, you know, do you have the pictures of the kids when they were little, when you were camping with the family? Uh, maybe it's dinner that you always like to go to. And tell us about some of your, your great Easter traditions. What are your Easter traditions? traditions for you too? Uh, just like now that it's just me and my wife <laughs> go to church and come home and have lunch and have an Easter bunny. Okay. Chocolate, yeah, a chocolate, chocolate Easter bunny. Uh -huh. There you go. The chocolate Easter bunny has to happen. Yeah. We Although, you know, I, I got, it's not really on my diet these days, so I'm kind of worried about what I'm going to do this year. Mm. Any oh. alternatives that you guys come up with? I'm, I'm sure, I'm I'm sure Mike has a, has a plan for you. We, we used to always have a, the best Easter, the Easter Bunny used to have the best Easter egg hunt for the boys when they were little. That was, that was it so was much great. fun. That it's was the so best. so much fun. So, yeah. But yeah, scan that QR code and uh, send us in. And by the way, we have got an Easter basket like you've never seen before here. We're going to tell right. you about that and uh, beef loving Texans, maybe a little something to uh, wash it all down with. So stick around in about 45 minutes. Nice. Thanks, Mike. All right, Justin, what's your, what's you know, your tradition? I, I envy you, Justin. I, yeah. if, I remember those Easter egg hunts like they were yesterday with my little kids scampering around. Yep. And Still going to happen. Still going to happen this Easter. Yeah, you're Easter lucky. Bunny will, you're very yes. lucky. Uh, it's always fun. It really is. And, you know, we always do a big lunch with the family. It's, it's, uh, do you really hide the eggs or do you kind of leave them out there where they can find them? Because, you know, some parents will, like, hide them where they're, like, yeah. Well, it's, it's the Easter Bunny, so you, you know. It's not the parents, oh, I'm David. sorry. <laughs> you know. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> he hides them well, though. Let me put it that way. Uh, yes. the kids are... I mean, he's very tall. <laughs> That's right. Uh, anyway, uh, let's talk about the drought monitor and see where uh, where we stand drought-wise. It's it's still not great. This was the beginning of the year. And uh, you can see that most of Bear County, a lot of uh, the Hill Country was within that extreme drought. But we've uh, we've kind of chipped away at it a little bit, although I'll point out places like Bernie and Kendall County and, and down towards parts of Bandera County still an extreme drought. This is what's pretty wild to me is that Kendall County has been at least part of the county has been in extreme drought for two years now. OK, this drought has been long term. And even San Antonio has returned to a moderate drought. We ate away at that a little bit for a while this uh, winter, but now we're kind of uh, seeing it come back into play. We could use some rain. We're still above average, so that's good, 8.47. Uh, but it's been a while since we've got just a really good, healthy rainfall. Uh, we're 2.68 inches above average. Certainly not going to get it today. In fact, you won't even find a cloud in the sky. Uh, temperatures right now are sitting at 70 degrees. What a beautiful day, 69 in New Braunfels. 70 Seguin, 68 Bernie, 70 in Kerrville. We've got a south to southwesterly wind, and that is warming us up from that morning low that was in the 40s. And the high temperatures today will generally be right around 80 degrees, so we'll gain another 10 degrees from where we are right now. There will be plenty of 80s on the map, and then mid-70s as you get up into the hills, places like Bernie, 75, 78, and Bandera this afternoon. I do want to let you know that tomorrow is going to be a windy day, so these southerly winds that we're seeing now are going to start to really pick up. We could see some gusts close to 30 miles per hour, I think, even tomorrow morning. So it'll be kind of uh, breezy to windy most of your Friday, uh, but that does warm us up. It's also going to bring in Gulf moisture. So we'll uh, jump to Friday, 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Dew points are starting to rise into the mid-50s, still in the pleasant category, but by Saturday morning, it's going to feel a little bit muggy. Uh, we'll start to see those dew points in the 60s. So uh, by 2 p.m. Saturday, let's say, Dew points are in the low 60s, and that's when you start to feel it a little bit more. And that humidity stays with us through Monday. Uh, so as we look at the long-term forecast here, uh, we're kind of in between systems. So tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday, uh, all is well. There is a low, though, that starts to develop out over California by Sunday, and then that scoots closer to us by Monday. It'll help to develop a frontal boundary. That'll scoot close to us by Monday evening, and that could touch off a few storms. Now. We're kind of on the tail end of the energy, as we often are, so I'm not looking for widespread rain. This will just be some isolated stuff. But a couple of storms could pop up. Again, late Monday evening, Monday night, into early Tuesday morning before this clears out. And then we get some drier air and nice weather by the middle part of next week. So 79 tomorrow, low 80s this weekend. 30% chance of some evening showers or storms Monday. And then drier and a little cooler Tuesday into Wednesday. We'll be right back. Let's go to Spurs tuning out the Jazz last night in Salt Lake City. The Jazz hang on by a note to that playoff spot. Victor Wimbanyama back in the lineup winds up with a jam. Spurs playing some pretty good defense, too. Utah held the eight points for about four minute stretch. Meanwhile, Jeremy Sohan picking up where he left off on Monday, the corner three. The Wimby special, though, he's going to come up with the rejection. And that's going to start to fast break. Get it down there to Chetty Ot Bam, three-pointer. All right, Spurs go on to win this one, 118-111, to 111, their 17th win this season. Devin Vassell, 31. Jeremy Soham, five steals to go along with 17 points. Wimby had 19 points and five blocks. The Spurs with 40 assists. Nothing like the sound of those aluminum bats knocking a base hit to go to the Northside ISD complex over there, the Brennan Lady Bears against the Taft Raiders, who hold the top spot in District 296A. Top of the third, Shania Chihuahua cracks one. There you go. Did you hear that? Little little sound right there. That's going to first base. Bounce off the infielder, bringing Fara Lemus home from second. Bottom of the fourth, Taft down three, nothing. Sophia Heroes chops one to short. Play can't be made. It's Kirsten Lopez sounds rounds third, heads to home. Then there was some lightning, so things got delayed. And then the Brennan Lady Bears bats came alive after the lightning, and they went on to win it 6-1. to one. Former Detroit Lion wide receiver and San Antonio native Josh Reynolds is reportedly signing a two-year deal with the Denver Broncos worth $14 million. 29-year-old Reynolds caught 40 passes, 608 yards, five touchdowns last season for the Lions. 
The Broncos have been busy retooling their offense and recently traded away former first rounder Jerry Judy. And Dak Prescott is now a contract year with the Cowboys and the Dallas front office has no plans, at least currently, to offer Prescott an extension. And according to sources, as of yesterday, the two sides have a mutual understanding of Prescott's contract situation. But today it was reported that the Cowboys do intend to reach a deal with Prescott at some point. Hey, it's Major League Baseball opening day. and The Texas Rangers are going to open the World Series title defense with the top AL Rookie of the Year candidates, two of them, in their starting lineup. Evan Carter and Wyatt Langford will join six All-Stars in the lineup when the Rangers raise their championship banner against the Chicago Cubs. Carter made his big league debut last season. He had a 306 batting average, 23 regular season games while reaching base in all 17 postseason games. And Langford was the Rangers' first-round pick last summer. He made an impressive ascension through the minor leagues. He had a 365 batting average, six homers, and 20 RBIs this spring. So some youth on that Ranger team again. So here's the schedule for your AL West rivals. The Yankees and the Astros score off at 310. The Cubs and the Rangers are slated for 635 for the first pitch. Baseball season is back. Here we go. All right. Boys of summer. There you go. The search for answers in Baltimore is happening both on and around cargo ship Dolly. I'm Christiane Cordero with the latest. New today at 5, parents of young children, listen up. There's a new warning about those colorful water beads we've been warning you about. They're marketed to kids and they grow in water. Not only can they cause life-threatening obstructions if a child swallows them, now new tests are showing that some of these popular beads are toxic. What that toxin is and the risk of getting exposed to it today after Entertainment Tonight. Question, do you get sick around things like car exhausts, certain perfumes, nail polish, hairspray? You might wanna pay attention to the next story, especially if you're thinking about having children. Researchers at UT Health San Antonio say parents with high chemical intolerance are more likely to have children with autism or ADHD. They've now published these findings in this month after surveying about 4,700 parents Garrett Berger with the study's senior author and what it means for you. In recent decades, the prevalence of people with ADHD or autism have increased. Dr. Claudia Miller and her colleagues think they may have a reason why. And this is why we think autism has been increasing over the last several generations, especially since World War II, because our exposures to these foreign chemicals, if you will, are all mostly new since that, that time. In a study published in the Journal of Xenobiotics, the researchers found a possible link between the two disorders and chemical intolerance. That's an issue, Miller says, can be caused by large or repeated exposure to toxicants like pesticides, solvents, toxic mold, or smoke from chemical fires. The researchers believe that affects mast cells, which are part of the immune system. Then, when you're exposed to smaller doses of those toxicants or even certain foods or fragrances, you feel sick. And the state of your mast cells, the researchers believe, could affect your child's likelihood of developing autism or ADHD. Even prior to conception. So if you're thinking about having a child, you don't want to have exposures like that if you can avoid it. They found parents with the highest chemical intolerance issues were almost six times more likely to have a child with autism than those with the least issues, and about twice as likely to have a kid with ADHD. Because it was just an observational study, they need more research before they can confirm it's a cause. It's enough evidence. There's enough evidence to intervene. But intervene how? Miller says you can avoid further exposure to chemicals, or if you're already intolerant, to your triggers. So using things like non-toxic cleaners and avoiding items like fragrances, pesticides, toxic mold, or even nail polish could help you from increasing your risk. But she can't say if anything will lower it. The most important thing probably is how we regulate products in this country and what gets onto the market and the things people then use in their homes. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. So how do you know if you have a chemical intolerance? Well, there's a couple of quizzes you can take to get started on finding the answer. And we have those posted on KSAT.com. Take a look at this QR code. It'll take you right to the page and those screening tools as well. They're just a jumping off point, but you can take the tests and discuss your results with a doctor if you're concerned about what you find out. Some people have intolerance to oak, like 
YouTube. Yes, like everyone look, in this look, studio. Right? He's over there rubbing his eyes and <laughs> coughing. And Justin's been coughing and sneezing all morning. I hope you're, you're not sick well, for the eclipse. It's because I, I cruised through Mountain Cedar season and I was fine. Uh huh. And then if it doesn't get you there, Oak will get you. <laughs> Uh, that's that's where I am. Yeah, I, I, I'll be fine for the eclipse. Just, uh, I'm going to make sure that's the case. Uh, I, I want to show you some pictures from yesterday. Boy, the rainbows. Did you see them? And I say rainbows plural because a lot of people caught the double rainbow. This was sent in by a viewer. I, I think these are some of the better rainbows I've seen because of the just the way the sky was set up. You had the really blue skies and then those rain showers that came through and the lighting was perfect. And so we got so many pictures. I want to show you one more. This one was from Trinity University. Just came in a few minutes ago. Uh, shout out to Dan there. But a beautiful shot of another double rainbow. Uh, we got pictures in from all over the city. And if you want to check out some of those pictures, you can see them on our KSAT Connect on KSAT.com. No rain today. A lot of blue skies. It'll be really nice. 78 at 3 o'clock, 79. That's our high between 4 and 5 o'clock. And then tonight we drop down into the low 70s by 8 p.m. and then eventually 60s. But it will not be as chilly tomorrow morning as it has been the last few mornings. And in fact, I think we only dip into the 50s tomorrow versus the 40s. Here's a look across the state. Uh, most places in the 70s today. It's nice anywhere you go. Uh, in fact, I didn't see any clouds across the state of Texas. And you will see some warmer temperatures as you get out towards Del Rio and Laredo. There are some changes on the way. We'll get some pattern changes, especially going into next week. Another look at that forecast for you coming up in just a few minutes. David. Thank you, Justin. Crews in Baltimore starting to remove the wreckage at the site of Tuesday's collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. ABC's Christian Cordero tells us more about the six construction workers caught in that collapse. The search for answers in Baltimore today is happening both on and around cargo ship Dolly. It's just utter devastation. Investigators have reviewed the ship's data recorder to better understand the moments leading up to the fatal collision. It shows alarms ringing immediately after the ship's lights go out, followed by efforts to change course, and then the Mayday call, all happening within five minutes. While aboard the ship Wednesday, the NTSB says it found 764 tons of hazardous materials, but no major leaks. Mostly corrosives, flammables, and some miscellaneous hazardous materials. Some of the hazmat containers were breached. We have seen sheen on the waterway. Still in the water, four of the six victims who officials say died after falling from the key bridge. When it collapsed, two bodies have been recovered. Divers located a red pickup truck submerged in approximately 25 feet of water in the area of the middle span of the bridge. Divers recovered two victims of this tragedy trapped within the vehicle. They were 35-year-old Alejandro Hernandez Fuentes, originally from Mexico, and 26-year-old Dorlian Cabrera from Guatemala. ABC News has also confirmed Miguel Luna, originally from El Salvador, and Menor Suazo Sandoval, who emigrated from Honduras, are also among the dead. They all lived in the Baltimore area. Maryland officials credit the quick action of dispatchers and police to prevent more drivers from traveling on the bridge, saying they undoubtedly saved lives. Hold on traffic on the key bridge. Uh, there's a ship approaching that just lost their steering. Including one of the two surviving construction workers who told the governor he heard an officer telling him to move off the bridge, so he ran. As he was moving off of the bridge uh, and literally saw the bridge fall right after he moved off. The NTSB's investigation could take over a year to complete, so we may not have clarity as to why the power went out for some time. The next priority is to reopen this port. It is the busiest port in the U.S. for cars and farm equipment. Christian Cordero, ABC News, Baltimore. Cases of MPOX, which we formally called monkeypox, are on the rise in the U.S. again. According to CDC data, there have been 511 cases reported this year through March 16th. Through the same period last year, there were fewer than 300 cases. Still, transmission rates are below levels from 2022 when there were tens of thousands of cases. Health officials are reminding people to get vaccinated. Those rates remain low among the at-risk population. While anyone can get it, men who have had sex with men are particularly at risk. Mpox is a less severe cousin of the now eradicated smallpox virus. A former cryptocurrency mogul will be spending 25 years behind bars. The jury sentencing FTX founder Sam Brakeman fried today. He was convicted in November 
of fraud and conspiracy. Prosecutors say the 32-year-old ran the FTX cryptocurrency exchange right into the ground while lining his pockets. Bankman Fried was the CEO at the time. He has made numerous bad decisions, which cost its customers lots of money. Analysts are calling the FTX collapse one of the largest white-collar crimes of all time. It's party with a purpose, and it's nearly here. The volunteers are already focused on the purpose part of these things, helping the San Antonio Food Bank. Now, you can help, too, without even leaving your home. And if you like getting your groceries delivered right there to your front door here in the San Antonio area, ooh, not too long from now, you're going to have at least one less option. We'll tell you what service is ending in our area. Coming up. A quirky convenience store on the west side has announced its closing. In a social media post yesterday, the owners of Jefferson Bodega said the store will close after five years as they face, quote, new horizons and fresh challenges. They also thank the community for their support and camaraderie over the years. You can read more about this story on KSAT.com. Also on our website, Kroger leaving San Antonio again. The grocery store chain says it is closing delivery facilities in San Antonio, Austin, and South Florida because... They're not performing very well. In 2022, the company launched an online-based grocery delivery service in the Alamo City. The e-commerce-focused facility was Kroger's first time back in San Antonio in nearly 30 years. Now the facility will close on May 25th. Vinyl records outselling compact discs last year for the second year in a row. And they widened that gap by selling about 43 million units, or about 6 million more than CDs. Records are bigger than CDs, so they're more expensive and not as portable, and the sound degrades every time you play one. The data doesn't say exactly why. Also, the resurgence of vinyl doesn't indicate a victory of analog sound in general. Digital music has shifted away from physical media like CDs to streaming. And the vinyl comeback is impressive, though. Before 2022, records hadn't been in the top physical music format since 1987. There were no jackpot winners in last night's Powerball drawing worth $873 million. However, according to the Texas Lottery, one person in Flower Mound near Dallas-Fort Worth won a million bucks. The next drawing is on Saturday. The jackpot worth an estimated $935 million. There has not been a jackpot winner since New Year's Day, so this weekend could be your chance. Nothing better than album. Nothing better. Forget the CDs. What was your this. first album? Oh, man, I don't even... I, don't, I got a bunch of them still, though. I don't I know. I think mine was Boston. Boston? More than a How feet? How about you? More than a feet. More than I, a feet. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, no, I, uh, I... You, you missed that I, one? I missed that era, but we we just oh. bought a record player. Did you really? So we're starting to get back into it. Do and you have any eight tracks left over? I, what are those? Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Man. apparently the sound is supposed to be, you know, it's just kind of a cool vibe. 70 degrees so far today. The average is 77. The record is 100, set back in 1971. Thankfully, we're not getting there, but it is going to be fairly warm this afternoon with sunny skies. Seven-day forecast is coming up. BTO. Bachman Turner, Turner Overdrive. Overdrive. That was my first album. <laughs> that was it? That was it. Bachman Turner Overdrive. What do they sing? You ain't seen nothing yet. Okay. Okay. But but baby, you just ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> Super Tramp was also a big Super deal. Tramp was good. Yeah. Right. ELO, Electric Light Orchestra. Oh that wow. Was a good one. We can go on and on. And just on. America. Back in time. America. I like it. That those Red. are all good bands. <laughs> yeah. I still have all these albums. More? Before. Do you want yeah. more, Justin? Have to Foreigner. Boss. I have to educate myself on. Have your wife come over to my house. I'll play all my old albums. Sticks. Good. We can go on and on. Sticks. Oh wow. Oh God. Sticks. Uh, to <laughs> total eclipse of the heart. Let's uh, use that as a transition. Okay. You, you have that one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Uh, eclipse. That's that's my that's my segue. I try. Uh, there it is. Uh, that's the uh, path of the total solar eclipse. If you haven't seen it yet. Uh, that's the path of totality. So that blue line is where you'll spend the longest time in totality and when you get towards the edges, uh, the time comes down. So you'll notice San Antonio is kind of divided in half, or at least Bear County is. 
Uh, so if you're on the northwest side, you will be in totality. It will only be roughly 30 seconds to a minute, uh, but you will be in totality. If you're on the east, southeast side, south side, you want to try to make your way into the path of totality. That would be my suggestion because even 99.9% .9 is not the same as uh, totality. So if you can, work your way north and west, but things will be crowded up there as everyone's kind of going to get the view. Of course, the other side told us is we need the weather to cooperate. We've been pouring through the models. At the moment, it's, uh, it's too early to say. There, there are some storm systems that may try to get close, we'll see. But we won't have a, a good idea until probably several more days from now. Lows this morning, 45 here in San Antonio, 45 Port SA, 37 Bernie Stage. It was 38 in Kerrville this morning. It was chilly. A lot of places were in the 30s in the Hill Country, and uh, it was a crisp morning, but now we're seeing temperatures really warm up. 70, and thanks to some southerly winds at 11 miles per hour, we're starting to see the dew point jump up. Now, it's still going to be a dry day. Uh, you won't feel the humidity, but this number is going to slowly rise, and even more so as we get into tomorrow. So our forecast, 4 o'clock, 79, that's our high today. Southerly winds anywhere from 5 to 15, down to 72 at 8 p.m., and then down into the low 60s by 11 and midnight. Here's the big picture, and we really are between storm systems here. There is not a cloud in the sky over Texas. you got to go all the way to the east coast before you find any rain, or the west coast where there is some rain and snow at this hour. But the middle part of the country is uh, getting a break in the action. But we're going to watch a low that will develop out west, and that will uh, work its way down towards Texas. Out ahead of that, we will get increasing humidity. So I mentioned things are fairly dry today, but by tomorrow that dew point starts to rise. And then by the weekend, you feel the humidity. It peaks on Monday before we see it drop off a ledge. Tuesday will be much drier, and that's because we'll get a front through here. So Monday is the day where we'll have enough moisture to uh, perhaps create a shower or a storm. And here's why. That low I was talking about out west kind of sits out there for a few days. But by Sunday into Monday, it starts to move a little bit closer. And it's going to help to bring a front through. Now, unfortunately, a lot of the energy is going to be up here up to our north. But that front should be just enough to spark off a shower or storm. This is late Monday. I think that's the time frame. So Monday evening to about midnight Tuesday. Uh, that's our window. So I don't know that we get a lot of rain out of this. And then the drier air comes in on Tuesday. Here's the extended forecast. We'll go near 80 tomorrow for Good Friday. We mentioned the weekend will be warm and humid. 30% chance of rain Monday with the front. And then we clear out and dry out Tuesday into Wednesday. And yes, we're still just a little too early. Uh, to talk the forecast for the eclipse, but man, we're getting closer and still keeping our fingers crossed, guys. Yes, we are. Thank yeah. you. We're just a few weeks away from Fiesta, but there's some folks already in the giving spirit. Volunteers from the Battle of Flowers Association lending a hand at the San Antonio Food Bank today. It's their way of honoring the parade's Grand Marshal, Eric Cooper. He is president and CEO of the Food Bank. They were sorting and packaging food to be handed out to those in need. Volunteers are collecting 1.33 million pounds of food to recognize the 133rd year of the Battle of Flowers Parade. And you can help the cause. There will be red barrels all over the city with different Battle of Flowers events. Uh, the collection's been occurring already, uh, so we're well on our way. But we need San Antonio's help if we're going to hit that goal. You can also donate online at safoodbank.org. Eric likes to remind people that even just $1 can help provide 10 meals to those in need. Yesterday they had all those gourmet cookies and food, and then Mike was with Fiona, but Mike's by himself today, so I don't know. And, and you know, he gets the food to himself. Yeah, so I've got something that I don't know if it qualifies as gourmet or not, but oh. it's Easter time. Oh. We've got peeps, chocolate and strawberry. We've got Dr. Pepper and then icy blue raspberry. Hmm. Ooh, Let's nice. see what our guests think about this. So Sarah Urabazo, charcuterie expert. So would you care for a peep? Yes, of okay. course. I think the strawberry and chocolate will go perfectly with my little charcuterie Easter basket. Look at that, a charcuterie Easter basket. She even decorates with peeps in there. So, yes. okay, I don't know if we'll make a whole charcuterie plate out of peeps. So, <laughs> all right, Eric Anderson is actually new to peeps, never had one before. Sir, would you it. like one? Absolutely. Do you mind if I take one of each? You can take one of each. Oh, would they go lovely. well with Hendrix Gin, do you think? We will have to find out. He, he will find out there. If yes. we hear him screaming in the background, he doesn't like the peeps. So, and peeps go well with everything, including beef. And Shailene McNeil, 
know, beef loving Texans. I've got to go with the Dr. Pepper. I mean, it's Texas. We're beef loving Texans. Dr. Pepper. It's got to go here for sure. <laughs> It makes good decoration. Yeah. That's what they are good for. And we have got uh, some great tips on beef and some of these really, really easy things to do. Of course, making cocktails, making charcuterie, that and a whole lot more. Okay, I'll do one too. Let's go, everybody. Ready? One, two, three. Cheers with the peeps. What do you think? Really? I can do it. That sounds good. Yeah. All right. Yeah, they grow on you. <laughs> mm -hmm.